Pro Tour champion Ben Stark. Welcome to the Magic Show. It's probably Green Sun Zenith. I think Grove Throw is a better construct card um, in the long run, but right now, like Green Sun Zenith just adds so much consistency to like multiple decks. In terms of pure power level, it's probably Tezzeret. The most powerful card is Tezzeret, mm. and it's going to make new decks, and it's going to see play in Legacy and Type 2. It might see some play in Extended, too. Someday Tezzeret will be the best card, mm. um, but currently I think it's the Sword of Feast and Famine. I don't really like the Green Black Sword very much, so that's not very high on my list. The Sword of Feast and Famine? Sword of Feast and Famine. The Sword of Feast and Famine. Actually, Sword of Feast and Famine. The sword lets you uh, have a very powerful, aggressive plan that lets you attrition people out uh, and keep mana up to counter things. So against Valakit, play it, it turn two Mystic, you know, at end of their turn, put it into play with Spellpierce mana still up, and then just start going to town. So I think that card is just has, is really under the radar and it's fantastic. Mirrored in the Siege, talk about a high impact set. It's having a tremendous impact on the format where it's funny, it's actually having a much bigger impact on the format than Scars did, even though it's a smaller set. But there's just tons of role-playing cards for lots of different decks. Uh, Mirror to Besiege had, I think, less of an impact than a lot of people expected. Overall, I think it's a cool set. I mean, mini sets don't usually add that much. I wouldn't say this one did either, but I would say it created another cool deck, and it created a lot of good solutions to some of the problems that were out there. So at first, it wasn't too different in that any deck we played, we knew couldn't, we didn't want to like be a heavy underdog to Valakut. So Valakut with Green Sun Zenith, you know, not incredibly different from Old Valakut, was the deck we ran the most games against. Because if you're losing to the best deck in the field, or the most popular deck in the field, and it was the most played, then you're probably not doing it right. It added a lot of consistency to, to multiple decks that already existed. Like, Kildalfa Red was a deck that existed, but it just gave it, like, more explosive power with Contested Warzone, more explosive power with Goblin War Driver. Uh, Valakut got more consistent, which is exactly what everybody wanted, right? <laughs> no. Clearly, a true traditional aggro uh, combo control metagame has reemerged. I mean, we've went through fairies, we've been through John, now Valica. Like, I just want a format where you can play whatever the hell you want. You know, and I, I think we're there. Like, I, I think, I think, finally, Mirrodin Siege has solved all the problems of, of standard. Drafting backwards is what you should have been doing from a very good go. It's, it makes so much sense because you, if it's the last set that you draft, if it's the last booster that you crack, you still draft the same in the first two packs and then you just, you just try to fit the cards in the last set into your strategy, whereas trying to draft entirely new strategies is impossible, basically. I wouldn't call it drafting backwards. I would call it, for the first time in my life, drafting forward. Do you take Kudotha Flame Fiend, or do you take Mind Control, or do you take Mirren Crusader? In an old system, that wouldn't be much of a choice, because you'd know what colors you were in by pack two, or three. But now, you don't know what colors you're in, so you actually have to judge each card on its own merits. It, it's interesting having it be first. You know, you kind of change your strategies a little bit. Um, but I actually think it'd be, this particular set would be better positioned as a third set. Infect is not actually good. It's a trap. Um, it, the first pack can totally slay you. Um, blue and red are both a lot better than they appear on the surface. And I think uh, Brad Nelson's right that Metalcraft is really tricky now.
think it's fantastic. It's a new thing for Magic, and it's a big event. You know, there's so many things going on here besides just the Pro Tour and the Grand Prix. The fact that there's all these different side events and, and different contests and different ways that, to have people here doing things Magic related. I think it's amazing. I mean, it's pretty simple. I mean, for all the pros who don't make uh, top eight, I mean, you get to play a GP without travel costs. For all the Magic players who aren't pros, they get to come out to a GP like they would anyways, but now they get to see all the pros from other continents that wouldn't necessarily be at their GP. I mean, whenever I don't do well in a tournament, the first thing I want to do is play another tournament to like redeem myself. So if you if I didn't make day two of the Pro Tour, I'd been very happy to have a Grand Prix to play it. Tezzeret now is kind of like Lotus Cobra was when I played it at Worlds in 2009. But most people that were playing Lotus Cobra then were just hoping for turn three Bane Slayers. And like, that's cool, but that's like, now look at Lotus Cobra now. You're powering out Genesis Waves, you're powering out turn three Titans. You're like, it does all these insane things and people know we have to deal with it. I think Tezzeret's like that. Tezzeret's a powerful card now, but it's just going to grow more powerful as the rest of the block kind of unfolds. Before this tournament, I, I, I think everyone tried to break it. You know, everyone tried to build decks that were kind of, it's just the obvious build around me card from Besieged. I'm going to play with it. It's a really powerful card that requires you to build your deck around it, but when you do, it's going to be the most powerful card in your deck. See, I'd just like to take this moment to thank Jace the Mind Sculptor for being so open-minded as to invite Tezzeret and, you know, like, Jace, Tezzeret, and I, we have a really, a good thing, you know? Tezzeret 1 was the card that got me on the Pro Tour. Mm. So, I mean, I gotta try his, his, his better half, you know? Mirren and obviously I'm a Mirren fan, but I want died in the whole Mirren, but I think The aggro deck definitely needs a I think infect needs more just I don't think infect can be playable and not <laughs> The ability to never number one skill a pro tour player has to have is so I guess the most important thing is the number one skill the pro tour player has to have is So what does it take to win a PT? You know, I was thinking of this imaginary card. Let's, let's call it Itter Blossom. It's Ooh. a black and a colorless. I mean, uh, yes, you poison lose, poison you, lose, you lose two life. Oh, two life. We're they have out. Infect, but don't fly. How good is that card? Um, I think, I mean, obviously it would be a very powerful card. Yeah. Um, <laughs> probably format defining. Wow. If you lost one life per turn and they didn't fly, or if they, you lost two life per turn and flew, I think the card would be very powerful, probably mythic level. Uh, with both on there, it's, I don't know, it's, that's a nice check. It's, the card would see play, it'd be awesome and limited, but uh, I don't think it would be too groundbreaking in standard.